In the years to come, it will be possible to kill 40 million American people in the 20 largest American towns by the use of atomic bombs in a single night. I am afraid that the answer to that question is yes. Since viewers would be curious about the milestones of J. Robert Oppenheimer's life after watching Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, here is a rundown of all the major events from his life after the atomic bomb. Based on the 2005 biography American Prometheus by Kai Bird and Martin J. Sherwin, Oppenheimer is one of the most highly anticipated summer releases of 2023 because of the credibility that Christopher Nolan brings with his impressive line of work and the strength of its ensemble cast. Set during World War II, the movie walks viewers through the developments leading to the creation of the first nuclear weapons. In its runtime of three hours, Oppenheimer will primarily focus on the Manhattan Project, a research and development program from World War II to produce nuclear weapons. While delving into other details of the titular figure's personal life, since Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer will mostly revolve around the development of the atomic bomb and its immediate aftermath, it may leave viewers wondering about Oppenheimer's life after the war. Therefore, here is an outline of Julius Robert Oppenheimer's post-atomic bomb timeline. Oppenheimer joined the Institute for Advanced Study. Following his tenure at the Manhattan Project in 1945, Oppenheimer accepted an offer from Louis Strauss in 1947 to become the director of the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey. According to one of his interviews, via Institute for Advanced Study, he described the Institute as a decompression chamber because it allowed him to take a step back from the ringing telephones, committee meetings, and other day-to-day -day snags of one's everyday life and narrow down his focus on things that truly mattered. Before retiring in 1966, J. Robert Oppenheimer was the third director of the Institute for Advanced Study for close to 21 years. While Robert Oppenheimer was the director at Princeton's Institute for Advanced Study from 1947 to 66, renowned theoretical physicist Albert Einstein was among the first few faculty members of the Institute, serving from 1933 to 1955. Oppenheimer and Einstein first encountered one another during Einstein's world round trip in 1932, when Einstein visited Caltech. While most other details of their relationship remain unknown, Oppenheimer's 1966 article on Albert Einstein revealed that they had become friends during the years leading up to Einstein's death in 1955. Oppenheimer became a nuclear advisor for the Atomic Energy Commission. The Atomic Energy Commission AEC, was established in 1947 to overlook United States nuclear research and development. The same year, while working at the Institute of Advanced Study, J. Robert Oppenheimer was assigned the position of chairperson of the General Advisory Committee GAC, of the AEC. In the following years, as the head of AEC's General Advisory Committee, Oppenheimer became a prominent nuclear advisor for the government, playing an important part in molding and redefining the nation's nuclear policy. Making good use of his position of immense authority as the nuclear advisor for the AEC, Oppenheimer advocated the idea that civilian authorities should be managing atomic energy and nuclear developments instead of the government solely having all control over it. To promote the peaceful use of nuclear technology, he also introduced the Atoms for Peace program in 1953. According to this initiative, nations would harmoniously share nuclear technology developments while avoiding the spread of nuclear weapons across the globe. Oppenheimer did not support the hydrogen bomb's creation. When the Soviet Union performed its first atomic bomb test in August 1949, far earlier than the American government had expected, another heated race to create the more powerful hydrogen bomb ensued. Unlike the atomic bomb, which uses nuclear fission to release energy, the H-bomb, referred to as the super back then, would rely on nuclear fusion to generate even more energy than the atomic bomb. 
Since Oppenheimer had already dedicated some time to theoretically research the H-bomb during his time at the Manhattan Project, he was well aware of its inner workings and the potential consequences of its development. Owing to the destruction caused by the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombing, Oppenheimer feared that the H-bomb would potentially take even more lives if it were to be used. Other than humanitarian concerns, Oppenheimer could also foresee how creating the H-bomb would further escalate the arms race between the Soviet Union and the United States, which would ultimately not end well for both nations. He also debated that their atomic arsenal already gave them enough tactical advantage to strike fear in potential adversaries, and developing the hydrogen bomb would only offer diminishing returns. Unfortunately, Oppenheimer's lack of support for the creation of the hydrogen bomb did not stop the U.S. military and government. In November 1952, they conducted their first successful hydrogen bomb test. As Oppenheimer had predicted, the arms race only escalated with this as the Soviet Union followed suit. Performing its first hydrogen bomb test in 1953, Oppenheimer gained influence in the U.S. government. Throughout the 1940s and 50s, J. Robert Oppenheimer got involved in a myriad of government positions and roles. Expanding his influence and ability to control policies and strategic plans related to nuclear technology. For instance, he chaired the Department of Defense's Long Range Objectives Panel in 1948, overlooking the military utility of nuclear weapons. He was also one of the members of the Science Advisory Committee of the Office of Defense Mobilization. In the 1950s, Oppenheimer became one of the leading scientists involved in several air defense projects, such as Project Charles, Project East River, and Project Lincoln. 1952 saw Oppenheimer chairing the five-member State Department panel of consultants on disarmament. The panel was the first to suggest that the hydrogen bombs testing should be postponed and the U.S. government should try seeking a new arms agreement with the Soviet Union, where both nations would peacefully agree to have a thermonuclear test ban. Oppenheimer's growing influence, specifically through his involvement in the State Department panel of consultants on disarmament, helped him vocalize his thoughts and beliefs on the potential dire outcomes of making nuclear developments without considering the dangers of nuclear warfare. Oppenheimer's role in the U.S. government was that of an advisor and scientific expert. And he never tried becoming a political power broker. However, his opposition to the H-bomb was not taken too well by many figures of authority. His fame and the positive response to his ideology struck fear in those who supported grander advancements in nuclear technology. Oppenheimer was accused of being a communist. After garnering evidence to support that Oppenheimer had communist ties through the FBI, Louis Strauss suspended his security clearance. Instead of succumbing to these charges against him, Oppenheimer requested a hearing. With what followed, a controversial hearing ensued between April, May 1954, during which his loyalty and reliability were put to the test. The hearing eventually ended with Oppenheimer's security clearance getting revoked, which ended his tenure as AEC's nuclear advisor. After his security clearance was stripped, he continued working in academia and delivered lectures on various topics over the years in different parts of the world. J. Robert Oppenheimer was diagnosed with cancer. 1965 was the year when J. Robert Oppenheimer was diagnosed with throat cancer. He was 60 years old at the time. And the probable cause for his illness was the fact that he was a chain smoker. He took radiation therapy and chemotherapy for his cancer in 1966, but unfortunately, the treatment did not successfully curb his illness. J. Robert Oppenheimer died 22 years after the atomic bomb. On February 15, 1967, J. Robert Oppenheimer fell into a coma. Three days later, he passed away in his Princeton home at the age of 62. 600 associates from the military, government, and scientific community attended Oppenheimer's memorial service, which was held at Princeton University's Alexander Hall. By following the account in Kai Bird and Martin J. Sherwin's Pulitzer Prize-winning book American Prometheus, The Triumph and Tragedy of J. Robert Oppenheimer, 
Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer adapts the theoretical physicist's true story and honors his legacy. So that's what happened to J. Robert Oppenheimer after the atomic bomb. I hope you like this video and please subscribe this channel. See you in another video. Bye.